a very comprehensive index a very comprehensive index if you want to know anything a common man doesn't know where does the quran speak about marriage so what do you do look under m marriage immediately you get the reference that go to chapter number 2 verse number 221 and to open chapter number 2 verse 221 is easy because every page is numbered if you want to know about divorce look under d if you want to know what does the holy quran speak about jesus peace be upon him look under j what does the quran speak about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam look under m everything at a fingertips it's easy therefore this translation is popular besides having ir to ir translation it has a very comprehensive index and the language of abdullah safali is very powerful it will even improve the english of a children if you are weak in english even your english will improve and it has very good footnotes it has commentary it's a medium sized neither too voluminous neither too concise this translation the holy quran arabic text with corresponding english meaning is by sai international this is one of the latest translations which i know of in english language in the world i was presented with this copy a couple of months ago when i was in jeddah in july it was immediately released and the publisher brother abul qasim he presented a copy to me during one of my talks and this translation has been translated by three reverts people say converts the actual word is revert by three revert ladies and they have alhamdulillah done a very good job this translation is concentrating on the meaning and the footnotes are very few only where absolutely required it's there otherwise the translation is a very good translation we have the noble quran in english language a summarized version of at tabri al qurtubi and ibn kathir with comments from sahi al bukhari sahi bukhari has been translated into english only by one person the complete nine volumes by mohsin khan the same person has translated the holy quran along with taqiyuddin hilali who was a great scholar and this quran is good if you want to know which verse of the holy quran is connected with which hadith mentioned in sahih bukhari in the footnotes if any verse of the holy quran is linked with any hadith mentioned in sahih bukhari it's immediately mentioned in the footnotes so it's good for doing research of the holy quran along with sahih bukhari this is the translation which king fahd printing press is printing now this translation the same is available in various sizes the smallest size is this it's the smallest english translation of the holy quran along with arabic text which i know of you might have seen many of the christian missionaries they carry a small bible in the pocket this is very good printing fine printing with very thin paper beautiful paper it's expensive but it's easy for us to carry in the pocket while traveling in the bus in the train you have time instead of thinking nonsense you can read the holy quran easy to carry easy to carry while traveling along with the arabic text easy to recite along with the english translation same translation but in a compact size then we have the translation the message of the holy quran by muhammad asad he was an austrian he was a jew his old name was leopold west and people who are well versed with the literary world they know leopold west was a very famous author he reverted to islam and then he translated this holy quran it's a very logical translation but at times he gets ultra logical he gets hyper logical otherwise the translation is very good and he gives the root word if there's a problem in understanding a verse he gives the root meaning of that verse and he quotes extensively from ibn kathir from zamakhshari from ar razi and various other commentators this is tafsirul quran 
by Maulana Abdul Majid Aryabadi, the same person who I said, who quoted, Al Quran is the most untranslatable book in the world. Abdul Majid Aryabadi. This translation is available actually in four volumes. This is only one of the volumes. And it is specialized in comparative studies because he quotes very often from the different religious scriptures including the Bible. So for comparative studies, this translation, it is there in four volumes, is a good translation. The Holy Quran by Muhammad Marmaduk Pikthal. This translation initially was very famous. It's the first translation done by a person whose English language was the mother tongue. Unfortunately, all the English translations we have, none of the translators' mother tongue is Arabic, unfortunately. And even English is not the mother tongue except for two people, Mahmoudouk Piktol and T.B. Irving. Besides these two people, English is also not the mother tongue. They have acquired it's a foreign language. Even though the translations are good, Mahmoudouk Piktol has done a very good job, alhamdulillah. But he has seen to it that the meaning is literal. So for research purposes, it's good, but it does not have footnotes and commentary, just a few here and there. But otherwise, for literal translation, it is good. Amongst the non-Muslim translators, the best effort is by Arthur Arbery. Because most of the non-Muslim translations are by Orientalists who do mischief in the translation. Therefore, I never recommend anyone to read non-Muslim translations. The best amongst all the non-Muslim translations that I know of is Arthur Arbery. And he has tried to maintain the Arabic rhythm in the English translation, but natural, it's not possible. But he has made a very good effort to try and maintain and make even the English translation poetic. This is the Noble Quran by Thomas Irving. His new name is Al Haj Talim Ali. And he calls it the first American version, meaning this is the first translation of the Holy Quran in American language. And he is a Canadian, and English is his mother tongue. I've met him also, Alhamdulillah. And he tries to make the translation simple for the common American. He makes the language very simple, like how you use it in day to day life. So it's good for children to read it, but while doing so, you cannot maintain the original message. He's made the language very simple, alhamdulillah, very easy for you to understand. He's even used slang sometimes. For those people, for Americans who are used to this, this translation is good. I normally recommend a translation which has been done directly from the Arabic. So if you want to read English translation, read an English translation directly done from the Arabic text. Not a translation from Arabic to Hindi and then English or Arabic, Urdu and then English because there are chances of double error. But even among such translations that we have, one of them worth mentioning is by Sayyid Abu Lala Maududi. I have not read the Urdu translation, but the English translation was first done by Muhammad Akbar in which the English is not very powerful. But this one, the new translation, from the Urdu translation of Sayyid Abu Lala Maududi is done by Zafar Ishaq Ansari. And it's very good, but it's very voluminous. The old one by Muhammad Akbar is present in 16 volumes. This one, only five have been printed so far. It's yet under publication. It's yet being translated by Zafar Ishaq Ansari. It is very voluminous. It's good for people who want to know when was this verse revealed, what the Nuzul Quran, what was the period, where was it revealed, about history, etc. For that, this translation is good. The other one is Dawatul Quran by Maulana Shams Pirzada, and Alhamdulillah, he happened to be from Bombay. Even this is originally translated into Urdu, and then from Urdu, it's translated by Abdul Karim Sheikh into English. Even this is a good translation. It is less voluminous as compared to Maududi, and it's available in three volumes. These were few of the popular English translations I've mentioned, but let me make one point very clear. Since it's a human handiwork, all the translations do 
contain errors. So tomorrow no one should come and tell me, you are praising Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Do you know how many errors were there in that translation? You were talking about Muhammad Asad. Do you know how many errors are there? I am aware about these errors, etc. But as I said, it's a human handiwork. There are bound to be errors. In this small description, I've only highlighted the plus points. The Holy Quran says in Surah Al Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 21, that had we sent down, had we revealed this Holy Quran on the mountain, thou would have seen it humble itself or cleave asunder for fear of Allah. Such are the similitude we propound so that you may understand. Allah says that if the Holy Quran was revealed on a mountain and if the mountain had feeling, the mountain would have humbled itself and would have cloven asunder. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the example of a mountain? Because as we know, mountain is a sign for stability, for strength, for size, for its hardness, as hard as a rock. Allah is saying, even such a strong thing, such a stable thing, such a hard thing, such a big thing, if it had feeling and if the Quran would have been revealed on it, it would have humbled itself and would have flown asunder. But the Quran was revealed on the human beings and to us it makes no difference. We think, many of us, that we are stronger than the mountain. We are more stable than the mountains. We are more harder than the mountain. Allah says, if it had feeling, it would have flown asunder. Giving an example that you better read the Quran with understanding and implement it. The Holy Quran says in Surah Al Namal, chapter 27, verse 92, it says that I have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rehearse, to recite the verse of the Holy Quran. And all those who receive guidance, it is good for their own soul. So, inshallah, I hope today that all of us Muslims, all the other brothers also, they make a resolution today that inshallah if we have not done it earlier from today we will start reading the holy quran with understanding if we don't know arabic we'll read the translation in the language we understand best let's make a resolution that we will read the holy quran and we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the hidayat first to understand the message of the holy quran and then to implement on its guidance i would like to end my talk by giving the quotation of a beloved prophet which was narrated by Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 6 hadith number 545, it says man wa alam. that the best amongst you is those who learn the Quran and impart its knowledge to others